The SR60 makes it easy to get a precise mark out on a remote transmitter or sond. And in this segment, we'll show you how to pinpoint a sond's position quickly and accurately. The sond will be locating as part of a Sea Snake video pipe inspection system. The sond is located inside the spring, right behind the camera head, and operates at 512 Hz. We've put the camera into a drain line that tees into another line after about 8 feet. We've pushed the camera past the tee and positioned it directly under a 90 degree cleanout. We've removed the cleanout cover and the camera is visible in the bottom of the pipe. The camera is in position, so we'll activate its transmitter. If 512 Hz sond mode is not available by pressing the frequency key, you can enable it in the main menu. See the Getting Started segment of this video for instructions on how to do that. Additional sond frequencies are also available, and your operator's manual contains instructions on how to enable them. Locating a sond with the SR60 can be boiled down to three basic steps. Localize its position, map its location, and verify your result. We'll localize the sond by using the signal strength reading to locate its general area. We'll just extend the receiver and sweep it slowly in an arc. Keep an eye on the signal reading in the upper left corner of the display. When the number is highest, the receiver's mast will be pointed toward the sond. We know the sond's general direction, so we'll lower the receiver and start walking toward it. As we approach the sond, icons will appear inside the active view area. We'll use these icons to map out the sond's position. Let's take a look at how we'll do that. The icons represent the position of specific locate points that are based on the shape of the transmitter's signal. There are two types of locate points. The first are called poles. There are two of them, and you'll find one pole at each end of the sond's antenna. The other type of locate point is called the equator. The equator is a plane or imaginary line that passes through the center of the sond's antenna and stretches out on both sides until the signal is so weak that the receiver can no longer see it. When the sond's antenna is lying horizontally inside the pipe, and the ground above is also flat, the equator will be located about halfway between the poles. If you draw a line between the poles, you'll find the sond where that line and the equator intersect. The SR60's display contains icons that represent the position of the poles in the equator. To map out the sond's position, we'll locate and mark the two poles, and then we'll locate the equator between them. To make it easier to see what we're doing, we've pre-marked the position of the two poles and the equator. When you get close to the sond, the receiver will display the location of the closest pole. We'll simply move the receiver until the pole icon is centered on the crosshair, and then we'll mark its position using the marker chips that are included with the receiver. After we get our first pole, we'll see a double line on the display. This line tells us how the transmitter is lying underground. We know the second pole is on the far side of the transmitter, so we'll move toward it along this line. We'll pass over the equator, and then we'll come to the second pole. We'll center it on the crosshair and mark its position. Now we'll line the receiver up between the two poles and head back toward the equator. We'll center the equator to finish mapping its position, and then we'll verify our result by making sure that the signal drops off when we move the receiver in any direction away from this point. In many cases, the signal strength will be highest over the equator. In our example, the signal is actually highest a couple of inches off the equator toward the first pole, so that's where we'll mark the sond's position. Before marking the sond's location, it's critical that you always verify your locate with the signal strength. Here's why. When a sond is exactly horizontal, the equator will be centered over the sond. But when a sond is tilted, the equator will be offset, and the greater the tilt, the greater the offset. The signal reading is not affected by the sond's tilt, so it accurately indicates the sond's position whether or not it's tilted. Here are some tips that will help you get better locates. First, to locate a sond, you need to be within range of its signal. This range will vary greatly depending on the transmitter's strength, soil conditions, depth, pipe material, and the presence of interfering signals. 
we recommend locating the sonde within a few feet of your access point like we did here and whenever the line makes a turn. We showed you how the equator can be offset when a sonde is tilted inside a pipe. In cases of extreme tilt, such as when a sonde is in a vertical portion of pipe, or when locating a sonde with a vertically oriented antenna, you may only be able to pick up one pole and the equator. In these situations, you can easily locate the sonde using just the signal strength. In the past few minutes, you've seen how the SR60 makes short work of locating remote transmitters using the simple three-step process of localize, map, and verify. Before using the receiver, be sure to read the operator's manual for additional information not covered in this video. On behalf of everyone at Rigid SeekTech, thank you for buying the SR60 receiver and thank you for watching this video.